This is the third video in our series of six. And in this particular video, we went ahead and turned the turned the wall in a, another direction to see if we could confuse you there. So this particular situation, you got your footings on the outside. The load is transferring for the floor is transferring to each side, but the wall it, the weight of the wall is actually transferring through the joists onto the wall below. So the load is going straight through. In the other videos, we had the wall uh, running perpendicular to the floor joists. These are actually running parallel to the floor joists. So we have the wall underneath, the wall above, and, and one joist. And it's common, if this isn't a lot of weight, just to have one joist here the, to transfer the load. You could always put two in, depending, you know, and again, this is where the engineer comes in. If you're going to do it and you're just guessing, you better put two in there. But sometimes you're going to have plumbing. And if this is a plumbing wall right here, this is going to be, uh, you're going to have to get a little creative sometimes with these uh, joists here because you've got to be able to get your pipes in there. I mean, this is where the planning comes in too. I don't know how many times a, a carpenter comes in and puts a joist here, but the plumber's got a three inch pipe that's coming up here where it would have been nice to have a notch out, out of it before the uh, plumber comes in there and uh, gets a chainsaw out and cuts a nice hole. Okay, I'm exaggerating, that's the old days. Okay, let's on with the video. There's another view there. Again, the weight is transferring straight down. But this type of situation is going to require another footing. So don't just think, hey, again, I can just build my wall uh, wherever I want. If it is a load-bearing wall, it's going to need something underneath it to support it. Again, this is where remodelers have run into big problems. They just want to put a wall in there and uh, you know put some weight on top of the wall and you can't do it all the time and I've got to say too that when you do if you're remodeling a home and you are going to put a load-bearing wall in you're gonna to have to cut the slab and do some modifications it's it doesn't always provide you with you know you can epoxy and dowel in whatever you want into uh, each side after you cut the slab um, to put a new footing in but uh, the slab the strength of the slab horizontally I don't think it's ever going to be the same after you do that um, just something I'm throwing out there but I would definitely um, rather see the footing underneath the wall than a wall because you don't want to reduce the strength of the slab horizontally and again that might not be a big deal but um, it is something I've thought about a lot and I hope that makes sense if it doesn't feel free to leave a question in the comment area and I'll see if I can make another video but once you cut anything you cut a hole right down the center of a slab now you have two two separate pieces it's always better to have one solid piece with all of the uh, rebar and stuff in it then once you cut into it and dowel into it i don't think it's a strong so i know i got off topic there that uh, really doesn't have much to do with this type of uh, system but that's just the way it is right you guys have to put up with that uh, with my videos i'm always going to be getting sidetracked so this is the third video and another way to do this um, it, to do this if the walls turn and remember I said in I think it was a video one that um, you can't have a concentrated load on one joist this would be this would be tough to uh, it's not going to be supporting it very well especially if it's a uh, load bearing wall now there is something I did not mention here I didn't mention in one of my videos but you can actually block you can run blocks let me see if I can get a better view here you can actually install blocks in between the joists you know probably 16 inches on center and run an entire row of blocks if the wall was moved over let's just say that the wall was sitting right here instead of on top of joists it wouldn't be sitting on top of any joists you can actually 
block run blocks and the blocks will actually carry the weight of the wall to each joist and then down the walls and I should have made a video on that maybe I will later but uh, um, I just thought I would throw that in there so if you have a wall that is not sitting on top of a joist but it is running parallel to the joist then uh, most engineers will allow you to block it and uh, and use the boards on each side to transfer the load so thought I would throw that in there so anyway that is it for this video um, this is video number three off to video number four go to the website for more videos on walls and engineering I will also have a complete list of the videos in this series along with other videos that I, I have already made video.gregvan.com structural engineering or go to the gregvan.com website any one of them and look for the video box in the upper left hand corner once you get to the video website click on the structural engineering link and you should be good to go you should be where you need to be